Hey everybody, Tim and Julie here for another Batman review, moving on from Adam West for a little bit. Um, the next logical step is Batman, the Tim Burton years. I, I consider this the 90s years, even though like it started in 1989, and technically it did go into like 2000 a little bit. It's still the 90s Batman to me. Um, so this is, like I said, Batman, the first movie, the Tim Burton movie, 1989. Uh, what'd you think? It was different. It was different. Different. Yeah. Um, so that being said, I was super excited to watch this. Um, cause this is more of the Batman I grew up with. Like this still predates me a little bit. Um, because I grew up more of like the, the cartoon that this is based off of. But um, like this is the type of Batman that I grew up with. Like this, when I, when I think of Batman, like the Danny Elfman theme song, the like, da -da 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 -da, like that's, that's what I think of when I mm -hmm. think of Batman. Not, not the na 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 Like, so it's, it's that it's that difference yeah. of like generations and stuff. Um, we didn't even watch, uh, the Prince theme. Like I, I should show you that because Prince did a lot of the music for this yeah. and had a whole music video, like the Prince bat dance. Mm -hmm. Oh God, it's rough. <laughs> um, but this, this is like, so for me watching the Adam West stuff, like we've been doing, like that is where it's like, oh my God, this is so hard to watch because when I think of Batman, this is a little bit closer to what I think of. Yeah. But in that same way, to see where Batman is now, people look at this and they're like, this is so cheesy and it's so dumb because you can watch this and you can clearly see like... Even though Jack Nicholson is so much darker and crazier than the 60s, he's still pretty close to Cesar Romero compared to, like, other Jokers. Whereas, like, because that's the thing. For this one, when I think of the Joker, I think of somebody who is insane. Cesar Romero's not insane. No. Jack Nicholson, this, is not insane. The closest parts in this that we see for me is when they're in the restaurant and he's throwing paint on the art. Oh, yeah. I absolutely love that. That is probably my favorite scene of this whole movie because I was like, that is something the Joker would do. Especially when, like, Bob goes to, like, slice one open. He's like, no, 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 no. I, I like that one. Leave that one. Right. I was like, that is something the Joker would do. And then, like, there's little bits and pieces of the Joker kind of spread throughout. But for the most part, I don't like Jack Nicholson. I don't either. At all. I absolutely hate Jack Nicholson, which is funny because my mother-in-law, it's his, it's her favorite actor of all time. I have only ever liked Jack Nicholson in two movies, which is funny because as big of a Batman fan as I am, as big of a Joker fan as I am, this is not one of them. The two movies I've ever liked him in is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, which was filmed in Salem, mm -hmm. and um, A Few Good Men yeah. with, with Tom yeah. Cruise. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah. Like, and th those are the only two movies I've ever liked him in. Because he's always a dick. Like, he always just plays a villain role. Like, he's always mean and stuff. And, like, it doesn't matter what movie it is. Like, anger management or, like, whatever it is. Like, I've just, I've never liked him as an actor. But, and so to watch him in this, like, that's what kills this movie for me. Is pretty much Jack Nicholson. Yeah. Like, we, so we, we did the, the, the Adam West Batman movie. And we had talked about how it just dragged forever. That's kind of how this one felt for me. Mm -hmm. Where is it just kept going and going. But like the plot just never did anything. Like, okay, Jack Napier like fell in acid and that's about it. And so that's, that's I felt like this movie just kept spinning its wheels. But I feel like it gets better after the next movie. Okay. So, which I mean, you haven't seen yet, but... Mm -hmm. So for you to go from Adam West, because I'm just I'm just talking the whole time for this, you <laughs> have nothing to say. Uh, for you to go from Adam West, Cesar Romero, um, in this one, 
I didn't even talk about actors. We get Michael Keaton as Batman, yeah, yes. which I love Michael I like, Keaton. Yes, I like him. Uh, especially to go from like Beetlejuice to this. Um, we get Jack Nicholson as the Joker, and we get uh, Kim Basinger as Vicky Vale. So, I mean, to, for you, you've seen Batman. You've seen you've seen three different Batmans at this point. Four, right. counting Michael Keaton. You've seen two different Jokers, Cesar Romero in this, and now two different Vicky Vales mm -hmm. because you saw this movie and then the 1949 serial. Right. So, a lot of stuff for you. Like me, I've had years to process and figure out what I like. For mm -hmm. you, how how is this transition like how how are you doing? Just to give me a break from talking. No. <laughs> you have nothing to say. Um when this Batman came out, my son was probably eight okay. or nine. So that's so what this came he came out in eighty nine. Yeah. He okay. grew, grew up with that Batman. I love Kitten Basinger. Mm -hmm. I think she's so pretty. And she did a good job. I liked how she did I, her role. I don't know if she was famous before this. I'm sure I, she had I, to have been. Yeah. I'd, but, I'd, I mean, that was before my time, so I, yeah. I don't know. Like, when I think of Kim Basinger, I honestly think of, like, this, this is, I hope she never watches this. I don't think she ever will, so it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I honestly, when I hear Kim Basinger, the first thing that comes to my mind is Alec Baldwin's wife. Like, okay. not a movie, not a, nothing, not a role. I just think of, like, and then they got a divorce. Right. Like, they didn't even last that long. But for whatever reason, like, that's the first thing that pops to my mind is, like, mm -hmm. oh, Alec Baldwin and Kim, Kim Basinger were that, married. That's somebody that's else it. I don't like. I don't like Alec oh, Baldwin. I love Alec Baldwin. I don't like him. No, when they broke up... I Again, going back to Beetlejuice. <laughs> oh, he's great. And he's the host of the match game now. Yeah. But anyways, we'll, leave, we'll, okay, we'll let that one go. Okay. Um, so for you, like, so like I said, so you've seen three Batmans, two Jokers, two Vicky Vales. We see the Batmobile. We see the Batplane. Mm -hmm. Is that it? I think that's all we see in this movie. Yeah, I like the Batmobile. I love that it. Was, it's so that nice. Was nice. That was nice. Like, that is one of my, I mean, it's, it's too dark in here right now, but like, I have Hot Wheels in the Batmobile. I love the Batmobile. Um, and it transitions a little bit to the animated series. The animated mm -hmm. about everything about, like, literally wearing the animated t-shirt t right now. Everything about the animated series. I will gush over that forever. Even if we do reviews of that, I'm mm -hmm. going to be like, this is so good. Like, there's nothing bad about it. Um, but even the bat plane, like, it's a... Yes, that was, I like that one too. It's a, it's yeah, a, it's a little bit better than the bat copter. Yes, a whole lot better. <laughs> Um, but no, I, I think I, I enjoyed like a lot of the updates. What I, what I liked about the Batmobile, at least one of the things I liked was the shields moment where he just, he, all he has to do is talk to the Batmobile to make oh, it do he, stuff. Yeah. When he was parked there. And then whereas like for Adam West, there was the episode where he's like, citizens do not approach because it will activate. Like that's not going to make me want to stay away from it. No. Like me being the antagonist that I am, I'm going to be like, so I'm going to get closer to that thing see, to see what, see, it does. see what it does. And then we've seen the penguin steal it at least twice. At least twice. Yeah. And then so like, but for him to actually be like shields activate mm -hmm. and then it just encases in armor. I was like, that's bitching. Mm -hmm. Like it was so cool. Um, I, I'm a big fan of Tim Burton's direction style in the 80s and the 90s, specifically. Like, most notably, like, Edward Scissorhands, Beetlejuice, this movie. Because he does, he's really good at, like, blending things. Like, here we are in 2020. This movie has been out for over 30 years. Um, and so, but, I mean... If you watch it, even in, like, the Blu-ray, like, we watched, like, you can clearly tell, like, the background is art. Mm -hmm. And it's just set pieces in front of it. Right. It still looked gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Or, like, when people walk, you can tell that it's, like, claymation or something. Mm -hmm. Or there's the one scene, I think it's when the bat plane crashes. And you can tell, like, it's toy cars uh -huh. with little fires next to it. But still, like, because it's zoomed in, it looks real. Oh, but, like, Tim Burton's like direction style i think is really really well done like i i think it does kind of fit because that's the other thing to think about for this movie like adam west's batman ended 
in 69, I think. After that, I mean, we had Wonder Woman in 77 mm -hmm. with Linda Carter. Linda Carter. Uh, which, I mean, we're not standing, but I just spin around real quick. <clears throat> um, and then by the time this movie came out, um, Christopher Reeves had done four Superman right. movies. So, I mean, like, we had Superman, we had Wonder Woman. It had been 60, what did I say, 69, 79, mm -hmm. 89. So it had been 20 years, 20 years before it since Adam West ended and then this movie came up. Right. So, I know it's it's difficult because the way we're doing it, where we're watching everything very quickly, uh -huh. it's hard to keep that in mind that it had been twenty years. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, God, like at that point, like Burt Ward was old enough to be Batman. So, <laughs> um, but I don't know. Like it's it's interesting just to kind of watch mm -hmm. the evolution. Like I said, it's. And this is not my favorite Batman movie. I wouldn't even say I really like this Batman movie just because of like Jack Nicholson mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I can also appreciate it for like it's that stepping stone of getting mm -hmm. to the Dark Knight. Right. And that's what Heath Ledger plays. Heath Ledger, Heath Ledger plays the Joker. Yeah, in Joker. well in the movie The Dark Knight, mm -hmm. but yeah. I mean at, at some point Batman becomes like that's like like, Superman is the Man of Steel. Mm -hmm. Like, Batman is the Dark Knight. Like, it's mm -hmm. one of his many, like, other nicknames. Because uh -huh. um, even after Heath Ledger, we get Jared Leto, and then Joaquin Phoenix. And, like, there's there's a, there's a lot at this point. Because, I mean, even since this movie came out, it's it was 20 years after Adam West that this movie came out. Mm -hmm. And since this movie came out, it's been over 30 years mm -hmm. so i mean it's it's another like evolutionary jump at this mm -hmm. point um all of that being said um to to be nitpicky and stuff this movie does have a lot of like firsts so as we keep con continuing watching batman um like there's the line where like batman breaks up the mugging in the very beginning and they're mm -hmm. like who are you and he's like i'm batman that's a big line on Batman, which is funny because like every Batman says that and right. Adam West, they, they did an interview with Adam West and he's like, so like you never said that line and Adam West is like, I never had to. People just knew I was yeah, Batman. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, damn, like Batman's <laughs> or, like Adam West is throwing shade at people. Um, so we get that in, I think it was 1987. Oh, I didn't look it up. Um, Frank Miller wrote the comic Batman Year One. And in that, like, it had already been established that Thomas and Martha Wayne died. Mm -hmm. And that's what made Batman, Bruce Wayne, become Batman. I think it was 1987. Frank Miller wrote the comic Batman Year One. I have it if you want to read it. And in that one comes the iconic image of Martha Wayne's pearls breaking from now until forever anytime you see a batman origin story there's mm -hmm. pearls everywhere oh, okay. like frank miller is the reason for that so doesn't matter what movie we watch if it shows bruce wayne's origin boom pearls everywhere so we get that um this has a lot of um like i guess meme is the right word a lot of like focus points like you want to get nuts let's get nuts is a famous line and then, of course, the Joker's line, like, wait till they get a load of me, is a great line. Mm -hmm. um, God, let's see. What else do we get? Um, I'm trying to read my notes. Uh, we get to see the, your first experience to Harvey Dent, uh, played by the amazing Billy Dee Williams, the first Star Wars actor in Batman so far. Mm -hmm. we, get, we get more later on. Um... But it's great to see Billy Dee Williams as Harvey Dent. He later goes on to be Two-Face, the character. Oh, Harvey okay. Dent is Two-Face. So we see that one. Um, we see Batman use the smoke bomb as he disappears. to mm -hmm. like Because he's got cops coming at him at both sides. So he throws a smoke bomb. Which in the King Tut episode, I think I, in the review we did, I had commented how the Egyptian woman threw a smoke bomb. And I was like, oh, Batman steals that. Mm -hmm. So we get to see that. <clears throat> um, I liked the Batcave. Because in this one, like it's actually like a secret entrance. Yeah. Rather than just like, we're going to gas you so you don't know where it's at. Uh-huh, and it's 
rocky and had bats in mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was good. Um, there's the the line again. So I've seen this movie multiple and multiple times because I've grown up with it. And one of the lines that always kind of made me like, oh, that's funny, is when at towards the end when the Joker is like fighting with Batman and he puts on glasses and he's like, you wouldn't hit a guy with glasses, would you? Wow. And I was like, oh, that's kind of funny. <laughs> Since we did the Adam West one and we did the bookworm episode uh -huh. and Adam West has the line, like never hit a man with glasses. And he makes all of the villains take their glasses off before they fight. Uh, like that little bit has changed this whole movie for me. <laughs> like I, I won't watch this movie the same way after mm -hmm. watching that little bit. So again, like you can see little glimmers of like inspired by. Right. Um, so like I could just talk about this movie for for <laughs> hours. Um, so for you, Jack Nicholson, K Kim Basinger, uh, Alfred, Mike, Michael Go, uh, Doctor Who actor. He's my, he's actually my favorite Doctor Who villain, the Celestial Toymaker. Um, so what do you think? I don't know. Like I said, I just I'm stealing the spotlight because well, like this but... movie, this movie gets me so excited. Just uh, 1989, well, the... and I don't I don't even like it. Can you just just imagine right now, like as we keep going further into it, like I'm like I hate this movie. Let me talk about it for 20 minutes nonstop. <laughs> so like. Yeah. It's once we yeah. get to once we get to something I do like, you're never gonna shut. You're gonna have to. I'm gonna bring like a squirt bottle, and you're gonna be like, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. So for yeah. you, Michael Keaton, anything like? <clears throat> no, I just like him as an actor. Yeah, and, and Kim Basinger. In same movies that you like, Jack Nicholson. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember watching that. <clears throat> um. I feel like One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I only liked it because it was from Salem. Yeah, like probably. if if you if you plucked him out and you put somebody, somebody else, else in the in same there, role, it might still would like the movie. Uh -huh. But there was one part when the Joker had her up. What was it? And he bought her that box, that mm -hmm. present. Oh, the big box. Mm -hmm. I think I know what, what you're part, but I'll let you finish. When she opened it and that. It's the flowers? My heart. <laughs> really? <laughs> my heart went. Because <laughs> that's, the, that's the let's get nuts scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my yeah. heart went whoop. Yep. Yeah, it was, yeah. Wasn't so, it, I, mean, I wasn't worked. expecting it. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's good though. That's yeah. the, the pop scares. Mm -hmm. Now see, for me, I love horror movies, but I hate pop scares. Because I have always said, like, I've never seen a movie that scared me. Mm -hmm. But to me, there's a difference between being scared. Like, like, like some, like there's a killer in the house and you're like, oh my God. And you're scared. And then somebody jumping out and saying, boo. That is like reflex. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a fight or flight type yeah. moment that you literally can't help. I don't consider that being scared. Mm -hmm. Because that's literally like, a, oh, uh, fuck you. You're done. <laughs> like, that's not like... If I'm on the edge of my seat, like, oh my God, I have no idea what's about to happen. Right. And you get that anticipation build. Mm -hmm. That's scared. Mm -hmm. But, like, I love how, like, the little hand popping out with the flowers. Yeah. Gotcha. Like, it got me. Because you didn't say anything. <laughs> no. Otherwise, I would have laughed at you. But... I'm sure you would. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it did. Okay. Um, yeah, but I grew up watching all the old scary movies you know because when our babysitter she let us watch them when my parents wouldn't let us watch them <laughs> and so i i loved them and so i don't son, mean to put you on the spot but what's an old scary movie for you like frankenstein okay. and the okay. mummy and those you know the old okay. back the universal classics 50, 60 I gotcha. years ago okay. yeah okay. and um so my son when he was probably seven, right? He wasn't watching. Oh. I'd be watching Friday the 13th and Halloween. Now see, those are the old scary movies for me. And all them. And he would leave the room. But then he'd look over and he'd peeking around the chair oh, watching them. And he watches them like crazy now. They don't bother <laughs> him now. But his dad always gave him the... That's saying that, you know, 
to, you know, go outside and play in the dark and stuff like that. He said, there's nothing out there at night that isn't out there in the daylight. So mm -hmm. there's nothing really to be scared of. But that, <clears throat> these days and times, it's changed. Now, see, I'm going I'm to disagree a little bit. Because mm -hmm. as you and I have both worked retail, right? I have been told for years, like I worked graveyard at a 24-hour Walmart, like everything. And I've always been told, why well, like the weirdos come out at night. As somebody who has worked retail for 15 years, there are no more weirdos at 2 o'clock in the morning Didn't than there are at like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Right. And everybody's like, oh, like, you work overnight? Like, the weirdos come out at... No. No, they fucking don't. They, they are there right in the daylight, too. If anything, overnight, like, it's easier to navigate because there's there are less people. Right. But it's easier to kind of get through. But that's, like... There's, there's nothing in the night that there isn't in the day. Yeah. Work at retail, absolutely. Yep, like 24-7. Like, it, it never goes away. But it, it's always funny to me. And the, the full moon thing, too. Everybody's like, oh, you know the weirdos are out during the full moon. Strategically speaking, scientifically speaking, more crime and bad stuff happen during new moons than full moons. Because when there's a full moon, it's bright. Yeah, it's bright. Because there's a big-ass moon out there. Mm -hmm. But when it's a new moon and there's literally nothing and it's pitch black, you're more likely to be attacked. So, but because people can see the moon, they're like, oh, something bad's going to happen. If you don't see the moon, statistically speaking, something bad's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So, uh, random fact for the day. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Shooting star, the more you know. Yeah. Um... Okay, and I, I hope your son watches this and is like, I never did that. Cause it, <laughs> that'd be great. Yes. I was never scared of Freddy Krueger. Oh, yeah. He, that'd, that'd be great. Yeah. So, yeah. So how old, wait, roughly how old do you think he was? He was born in 81, June of 81. Okay. So. And by the time Freddy Krueger, so he's probably about 10. He, yeah, he was in like, well, it was in our when we moved into our trailer house, and he was in kindergarten. So since five, so he had been probably about eight. Okay, so as his kids are approaching that age, are you tempted to be like that evil grandma and be like, "Here, let's watch this movie"? They won't. They wouldn't watch them. You I don't. I don't. Well, because I don't really know. Because. So I'll tell you right now, if Cameron comes back over, I'm going to be he, like, here, this, let's, let's watch this movie. Yeah. But if I can get him to scream, like, <laughs> that'll make my whole day. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to, I don't have kids. I don't yeah. care. Like, I'm not that nice. Like, I don't have that parental instinct where I want to protect kids. Like, if I can turn on a movie and hear a blood curdling scream, my day's made. I'm like, <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Just don't pee on my couch. Mm-hmm. No, he, but, like I said, his dad now, he watches all. Oh, so they probably, but see, that's so the other probably, thing. He, so the kids have probably been exposed to some of it, and, you know, if they don't like it, they Because Cameron's the second oldest. What's the yeah. oldest? Uh, Nicholas. So he's probably already seen horror movies. Like, he's probably. graduated and everything. He's probably seen more than I have at this point. Because, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, I kind of stopped watching horror movies. Because they just got dumb. Like, yeah. I try really hard to watch them, but I just can't get into them. Um, we, like, completely lost Batman at some point. <laughs> like, people are like, why the fuck are we watching this TV show? Like, yeah. or, why it's, it's not even about Batman. About, yeah. Um, okay, that's, that's really, so we went from Adam West, and I don't even need my notes. Um, we went from Adam West, we have graduated to the 90s Batman. Mm -hmm. Uh, are you still interested? Are you like, oh, this is... Yeah, I'm interested. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll admit, like, this is not the favorite, but this is, like, the stepping stone. Um, I'll, fuck it, I'll, I'll go ahead and say it. Uh, the next movie, Batman Returns, is my absolute number favorite, number one favorite Batman movie. I think it's fantastic. So I can't wait to watch that one, which you're probably gonna hate that one. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but just because I, just because I love it, <laughs> I'm expecting you to be like, this is okay. stupid. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Um... So for this one, 
we've left Adam West. We've gone into the Tim Burton. Um, still digging it. Do you feel like you've grasped the Batman character? Are you still enjoying it? I'm enjoying it. Good. Yeah. Okay. Um, any closing thoughts? Who, as we, I'm not going to say if they show up or not, so I'm not, I'm not going to look at you, even though we're looking at the same camera. Yeah. Um, as we go into the more darker Batman, mm -hmm. looking at the Adam West characters, because we've seen the Penguin, we've seen Catwoman, we've seen the Riddler, we've seen King Tut, We've seen lots of characters. Right. Who do you want to see in the darker movies? Who are you looking forward to? Like, I'd like to see what their interpretation of this character is. I won't okay. tell you if we. I won't tell you if we do or not. Okay. I just or if it's good or not. Um, Catwoman. Catwoman. Okay. Yeah. Because I already know Heath Ledger. Plays the Joker later mm -hmm. on. Okay. And he looks creepy. Yep. Um, so, yeah, Catwoman. So Catwoman's the one. And that... I don't know. I can't remember if they've put somebody different in as a Joker. Okay. I don't know. I'm not Joker, but as Penguin. Oh, as Penguin. Okay. Yeah. I know the answer. I know I, you do. I, I, <laughs> I will save it for... For next time. Okay. So, so Catwoman and the Penguin. Right. The okay. Well, good. Okay. We'll leave that that. Um, so you're still excited? Any other closing thoughts? No. No? Okay. So, um, believe it or not, this review has been about Batman 1989, <laughs> the Tim Burton movie. It's been about everything under the sun. Um, so for those who have seen it, as we go into the 90s, for me, this is less about reviews and more about like a look back, a nostalgia visit, um, because I mean they're so they're so old at this point. The Adam West are reviews because I've never seen them. Right. For me, the '90s Batman is more of just like a hey, let's reminisce type thing. Mm -hmm. So for those who have seen it, like I said, I hate Jack Nicholson, so this movie was a little bit rough, but it did have its highlights, yeah. like. My favorite two scenes, as I've already said, I said one of them, I'll, I'll say the second one. My favorite scene is the, the, the Joker doing the dance, destroying artwork. And probably my second favorite scene is the party where Vicki Vale's like, do you know who Bruce Wayne is? And Michael Keaton's like, no. no. And then when he introduces himself, he's like, oh, it's from Japan. Well, how do you know? Because I, I bought it in Japan. <laughs> and you're like, oh shit, that's Bruce Wayne. Mm -hmm. So... Stuff like that. I love those two scenes. Um, so for those who have seen this movie, go ahead. Let us know what you think. Otherwise, we will see you guys next time for Batman Returns.